Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good evening everybody, uh, maybe I should say good morning or good afternoon uh, because I really do not know what time you are really seeing this video, but since I am shooting it at the evening hours, so good evening from my side. So we uh, ended uh, yesterday's discussions with a small homework it says try to find an example of a function from R to R which has a local minimum and no global minimum. In fact, I will just give you an example of a function. So, let me try to write down a function. So, this is the function that I have written down. So, f is a function from R to R and that is given as f x is x when x is less than half, f x is 1 minus x when x is between half and 1 and it is greater than is equal to x minus 1 when it is greater than equal to 1. So, if I draw the graph of this function it would look like this. So, here I draw the graph up to x equal to half. So, x equal to half y is also equal to half because of both of these. So, this is x equal to half And then I come down to x equal to 1 and then I go up at an angle of 45 degrees. So, this is my graph. Now, you observe that it would be nice to write as x equal to 1. So, x equal to 1, x equal to half both have interesting characters x equal to 1 is a local minimize, minimizer x equal to half is a local maximizer but if you look at this problem this continues to go up and this continues to go down so the problem is unbounded both below and above so, the problem in general unbounded below and above. So, this problem is unbounded below and above. So, this is the example that of course, you can say oh this is not differentiable at this point and this point it is quite right, but try to figure out a such an example where the function is differentiable. So, I start the talk today with this homework for you, try to get a similar example with a differentiable function. So, in this function for example, only local optimization matters, global optimization does not matter. Which is differentiable. Okay. 
Now we move on to a bit more sophistication. So our aim would now be to consider functions from Rn to R and discuss the meaning of the three things, local minimum, global minimum. and strict local minimum. The definitions are all similar. The definitions are all similar, but there is a crux here is that what we have to now do is to define what is the meaning of a neighborhood. So if you say let us our prototype model for anything of higher dimension is a two dimensional plane. In the plane R2, take any point. So, neighborhood is nothing but you draw, draw a circular disc of radius R around it. But do not consider any point on the circle. So, I have kept it as a dotted line, only consider points inside. This is my X and So, uh, R neighborhood hood of X is nothing but the open ball around X which is given as the set of all X such that norm of set of all uh, Z in this case X is fixed set of all Z in R Rn in our case. So, let me be more specific that I am in Rn. So, whatever I am writing it for writing for R2 can be easily changed to Rn by replacing 2 with n. Norm of that is the distance between Z and X is strictly less than R. Of course, so the R neighborhood is nothing but open this open ball of radius R. Of course, you can similarly draw one's attention to the closed ball of radius R. So, this is usually symbolized as radius R with center X in this case. This is nothing but all Z in Rn such that norm of Z minus X is less than or equal to R. You did not have the equality there. Now, once I know about these things, I would go to the notion definitions, but just this symbol B1 X or B1 sorry B1 0 and X is 0 is usually denoted as this unit ball in Rn. So, there is an open disc or open ball of radius 1 and centered at 0. So, it is called is usually denoted as this and it is called the unit ball in Rn. And now we will go to our definition. So, first we will define a local minimum. So, we are doing it for the unconstrained case. Now, how do I do? 
a local minimum the same definition just like the constraint case the same definition, but here your neighborhood gets changed with the neighborhood that we have just defined your delta neighborhood or that open interval in case of R which was uh, this one gets changed to this one and so a local minimum definition is for as follows a point x bar element of R n is a local minimum of f over R n if there exists delta greater than 0 such that for all x in b delta x bar f of x is bigger than f of x bar. Global minimum means of course it is for all x in R. So again I will give the definition of a so what do you mean by global minimum? point x bar in R n is a global minimum of f if f of x is bigger than equal to f of x bar for all x in R n. So, consider this function f of x y is equal to x s square plus y square where x and y is element of R cross R both are real numbers which is same as R 2. In this case if you see that this, is this function value is always greater than equal to 0. And if I put x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 that 0 value is achieved. So x bar y bar is equal to 0 0 is the global minimum of f over r 2. So now we will talk about the strict local minimum. Now the strict local minimum has the same approach as yesterday. A point x bar element of R n is said to be a strict local minimum. if if there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x element of b delta of x bar f of x is strictly bigger than f of x bar whenever x is in here but x is not equal to x bar that is enough this is enough to write this. So this is a crucial fact that x is not equal to x bar. So if you look at this function again
this one, one we just took. Then x y is equal to x bar y bar is equal to 0 0 is actually a strict global minimizer. Okay, so, we have some idea now in higher dimension how to write the things. So, as we said that this is largely storytelling. So, because this is storytelling I really have, have to lighten up the atmosphere. One important book that one might read which will make him a convert into an optimizer he would be attracted towards this field is the following book. The name of the book is Optimization Insights and Application by Jan Brinkwies and Vladimir Tikhomirov, published by the Princeton University Press uh, in the Princeton series in Applied Mathematics. But I do not know whether there is an Indian edition of this book. So, uh, it is a good idea, however, to write this down in detail. Of course, I told you about another book of Vladimir Tikhomirov, I am a great fan of his, he is Vladimir Tikhomirov is an extremely deep person uh, and, a, and a great mathematician. So, what I would like to look into is uh, to write down the name of this book. So, optimization insights and applications. Okay. This book by Jan Brinkwis is from Netherlands and Vladimir Tikhomirov. It's published by the Princeton University Press. Okay, once this is done, maybe let us look at a take a little, little insight into this book. Uh, maybe I will do some reading from this book, you might uh, like this idea. What, uh, what you really need in optimization is to able to compute the minimizer. So, if you want to compute the minimizer, you must know how to compute the minimizer. So, there must be some equations or something from which you can compute a candidate for a minimizer. So, that to do that you need to do, you need to uh, take into account the development of necessary conditions. So, if you talk about necessary optimality conditions, so using necessary optimality conditions you can compute out a point for which could be considered as a minimization, minimizing point and then really test whether it is a minimizer or not. So, uh, I am reading out from the introduction of this book just which I have mentioned optimization insights and applications thing is necessary conditions what is the point. So, let us hear from the experts as Lagrange as Laplace has once told go to the go to Euler go to Euler he is the master of us all. So, you really have to learn from the masters. So, that is what we are trying to do. Six reasons to optimize. Suppose you have just read for the first time about a new optimization method say the Lagrange multiplier method or the method of putting the first derivative equal to 0. So, which you already know from school 
at first sight it might not make a great impression on you. So, why not take an example, find positive numbers x, y with product 10 for which 3 x plus 4 y is as small as possible. So, here you see he is asking you to solve this problem, minimize 3 x plus 4 y subject to x y is equal to 10. So, here my set C, the set C is set of all x y such that x into y is equal to 10. So, it is consisting of all the points 10, 1, 5, 2, 2, 5 where the product is 10 and many, many other points 1 by 10 into 1 by 10, 100, 100, 1 by 10. So, there are many such points. You try your luck with multiplier rule and after a minor struggle and maybe after the unsuccessful attempts, you succeed in finding solution. This is how the multiplier rule comes to life. You have conquered a new method. You see a very simple looking uh, problem like this is actually a very hard problem in optimization because of the these restrictions. These constraints are not very hard non-linear constraints while this is a linear function, you are minimizing a linear objective over hard non-linear constraints. So, this is a very interesting example of a constraint problem which is so simple, but yet very hard, but which looks so simple when you look at it, but it is actually very hard to solve. After a few numerical examples, you start to lose interest in these exercises. Of course, uh, if you just keep on doing applying the Lagrange multiplier rule or whatever optimality conditions we propose, then you would really lose interest you want more than applying the method to the problems that comes from nowhere and leading to nowhere. Then it is time for a puzzle and here is one that is if you are getting bored with problems we should tell you a puzzle. To save the world from destruction agent 007 has to reach a skiff 50 meters offshore from a point 100 meters farther along a straight beach and then disarm a timing device. The agent can run along the shore at 5 meters per second, swim at 2 meters per second and disarm a timing device in 30 seconds. Can 007 save the world if the device is set to trigger destruction in 73 seconds? The satisfaction of solving such a puzzle by putting derivative equal to 0 in this case is already much greater. So, this is also an optimization problem that how what is the minimum time in, in which you can reach the device. So, but you can say as he uh, shows here in this book uh, what Brinkwitz and Tikomirov shows that even this problem is actually quite difficult. What I can do is why do not I write uh, y from here as 10 by x and then I write it down as minimize 3 x plus 4 into 10 by x. So, it is just a problem in x, a problem in single variable and we take derivative equal to 0 and whatever and try to solve it. And once you know that optimal x, you will know the optimal y. The question is that do we need to really use the multiplier method? for this sort of problems it is so simple does multi so does the multiplier uh, rule have the right to exist that is what he asks in this book he says that it is the ancient problems of geometry which really had shown the strength of multiplier method a thing which we will also discuss we will discuss a couple of examples from this book so time for the test of strength of this method. How can we put down 4 sticks to form a quadrangle of maximum area? That is you again I told you will come with a geometrical problem. We have 4 sticks given to you which are of fixed lengths. Now, with these 4 sticks form a quadrilateral
and this quadrilateral should enclose the maximum area and the sticks need not have the same size. So, then the answer is square if the sticks have the same size. The sticks can have different sizes. So, what is now in which way I should arrange the four sticks so that they will have maximal area enclosing, they would enclose the maximum area. As Vladimir Tikhomirov and Brinkwist writes that this is not just a run of the mill problem. In ancient times the Greek geometers, geometers knew this problem already. They tried very hard to solve it using geometrical methods. Yesterday we actually used an algebraic and geometrical method, arithmetic geometrical, arithmetic method and geometrical method to solve such a maximization, minimization problem. We will do some more of them as we come along. They tried very hard to solve it, but without success. But with the multiplier rule, with the Lagrange multiplier rule, which will be one of the most interesting topics in our discussion, we will solve it without any difficulty. As he writes here, we do not know anywhere to solve it. So, this is a very, very important step. So, here with this very basic introduction, we start our further discussions. So, what we need to discuss is that we would be in the world of differentiable functions. So, you can first ask me what are differentiable functions. I assume all of you know it, but once you are on a higher dimension from functions from R into R, differentiability might not be such a straightforward concept as you see in functions from R to R. But the clue, we will take a clue from the functions from R to R and then try to develop the notion of differentiability of a function from R n to R. So, if I have a function from R to R, so what is the meaning of the derivative? So, a derivative is defined as you have also known in high school at a given point x, take the limit as h tends to 0, means h is moving from left and right both ways. What more information I can have from here? The more it, the information that I can have from here is as follows. See f dash x does not really depend on h, this is free of h. So, I can write the whole thing as So, I hope you agree with this writing. So, once you do that, this would actually come down to doing some computations here. that is pretty interesting. So, what you have is there is a quantity because x is fixed, this is the top quantity here is a function of h. So, I have a function of h when I am dividing that by h and as I am tending the limit as h goes, I am looking at the limit as h goes to 0, I am getting 0. Then this quantity on the top is a quantity which is called the small o of h or the small order of h. So, this quantity on the top is defined as follows. So, 
small o of h small o of h. Now this actually means small o of a, any quantity is called small o of h if this is true. So of course you can write the derivative, the derivative has also leads to the following expression which is called the first order Taylor's theorem. Basically, if I take out this, then this is nothing but a linear approximation of the function value near x, but actually there is an error. If the function is linear, there will be no error, otherwise the function is actually linear, there is an error. So now how to define it for higher dimensions that is the whole question. To do that definition we can generalize the whole idea here you see I have multiplied the derivative into h the increment and then there is this error but there when I go to higher dimensions I am moving in the space Rn my vector h the increment is a vector it is no longer a scalar and then multiplication has got to be changed with inner product. So this definition was originally given by Frechet and one of the most useful definition of derivative of the French mathematician Frechet which is called the Frechet derivative. Named after Maurice Frechet. French mathematician. So what he says that if you have a function from Rn to R then F has a derivative at x if there exists there is a sign of there exists. So if you do if you those who are getting confused this is a shorthand for the word there exists shorthand. If there exists V element of Rn such that limit. Now I cannot divide by h it is a vector but I can divide by the norm of h which is the, the length of h. Sorry here I cannot write the same thing because now my dot the e multiplication is changed into the inner product divided by the norm of h that should be equal to 0. In fact those who are uncomfortable with the idea of inner product just to recall because this is a slightly advanced level course inner product of two vectors in Rn is so they will have n components is nothing but this one. And norm of h square is nothing but the inner product of h with itself which is nothing but the Euclidean distance from 0 square of the Euclidean distance from 0 where h1, h2, hn are the components of h. So this is what is the meaning of the derivative which also means that f of x plus h 
is equal to f of x plus v of h plus o of norm of h. Now, if you do some simple calculations, then you can show that if v is a vector v1, v2, vn, then v1 it would imply that v1 is equal to del f del x1, v2 is equal to del f del x2 dot 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 v n is equal to is a partial derivative of f with respect to these variables. So, v is then symbolized as the gradient of f at x and which is nothing but del f x 1 dot 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 del f del x n. Similarly, you can define the second derivative. The second derivative would also be of big help when you uh, do second order conditions. So, it is not only the necessary conditions which is of help, sometimes you have to go to what are called sufficient conditions that if I have figured out a point and I am now it is one of the candidates by which we could for a minimum, I really have to show that it is a minimum and one of the simplest paths to do it is to check certain whether this point satisfies certain conditions which are called sufficient condition and which are usually involving the second derivative. So, it is important for us in the case from function from R n to R decide what is the second derivative. So, second derivative means f is already having the first. So, I am given, given fact is f is fresher differentiable. Now, once I know this, how do I define the second derivative? f has a second derivative at x if there exists a n cross n matrix A x such that f of x plus h is equal to f of x plus grad f x of h plus half h a x h plus o small o of norm h square this time. Now, after certain calculations, if you assume that all these derivatives are continuous, that is, so if each del f del f x i is continuous. as a function of x 1, x 2, x n, then A of x this matrix can be written as
So, you are taking the derivative of the gradient matrix first with respect to x1 and then del 2 f del x2 del x1 del 2 f del x n del x1. del 2 f del x n del x 1. Of course, I am taking this continuous so that you know this uh, this and this are equal. Then the matrix is symmetric and nice and can have much better properties which is useful for optimization. del x n del x sorry del x sorry I am making a mistake here I will just write it clearly. Now I have last line I have del f x n and del f x n is now I am going to take its gradient of del f x n. Del f x n is a function of x 1 to x 1 to x n and I am taking its gradient. So, del 2 this symbolizes del 2 f del x 1 del x n del 2 f del x2 del xn so this and this are equal if they are if, if all these are all the first uh, del fx these are con continuous as a function of x next to xn and all mixed partial derivatives are also continuous and all all second order mixed partial derivatives are continuous Then you have this is equal to this Young's theorem. So, that is uh, interesting actually. I am not writing what is in the middle. The trace is the Laplacian. So, this is usually symbolized as the Hesian matrix of F at x. And this is very very important to determine whether a point is a minimum or not. So, with all these assumptions, the Hesian matrix is symmetric. So, now we have done enough material at hand to start our progress step by step. So, now uh, what we will start with is unconstrained optimization that will be our goal tomorrow. Thank you very much. We will start with this topic. You must say, oh, what about the C? What about these constraints? We will not come to constraint optimization immediately. We will talk more in detail about constraints when we start constraint optimization. The goal is to talk about the basic theory of unconstrained optimization. How do you find locator minimizer? How, how, how do you compute it? How do you know it is a minimizer? Use of this. And then can you develop algorithms to really find out an unconstrained minimizer? This is the this is the goal. So we will keep in mind these little things before we make uh, further progress. Thank you very much. <coughs>